A pleasant and a beautiful good morning to you. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I trust that as you go through the day, you would allow God to lead and direct your life as you surrender yourselves to Him. May His name be glorified in you. Almighty God and our gracious Father, thank you for your loving kindness and for your tender mercy. Thank you for all that you have done for us and all that you are doing for us. We present ourselves to you today for your service. Remove any obstacles from our lives that would hinder us. Grant us your faith. Grant us your strength and your wisdom. Give us a determination. And Lord, may we, give it, may we have a love for your word and things pertaining to you. Father, our hearts are yours, our bodies are yours, our minds are yours. Today, Lord, make us what we need to be, and may our lives be reflectors of your goodness. Help us to be walking testimonies of your love and goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we are going to look at a passage we probably would have perused before. It comes from the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, we are going to read from verse 4 down to verse 12. Sorry, to verse 10. Ephesians chapter 4 down to verse... Chap Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 4 to 10. But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in trust and tr transgressions. It is by grace ye have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in Christ Jesus, in order, in order that in the age to come, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. When we understand God's love for us, and when we understand how God thinks about us, we begin to look at ourselves from a different perspective. Many persons walk around with low self-esteem. Many Christians do not know who they are or they do not know their worth. They sell themselves short because they do not have a proper perspective of who they are and how God views them. How do you value your self-worth? How do you value your worth? Do you value yourself from the job you do? Do you value yourself? Do you, is your work, does your worth come from the car you drive? Does your worth come from the family you belong to, your physical family? Does it come from your wealth, your beauty, your children, the things you accomplish? These things will all fade away. The criteria by which we judge ourselves or how we view ourselves ought to be how our Creator views us. You should base your worth on what God says about you. When you look into the Word of God, and you see what God says about you. 
then you begin to get a proper perspective of who you are and what you mean to God and how he sees you. If you read the book of Genesis when in, in, in the, the first two chapters, when you in, in the creation, after God created something, he said it was good. The day that God created man, humanity, he said, behold, it was very good. It moved from just, he made the world, the, 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 the trees, the waters, the seas, and, everything, and all that was good. And when he created man, God said, behold, it was very good. He had come to a point where he had created his masterpiece. He had, he, had, he had designed what he had seen in his mind and this was so close to his heart and this was so meaningful to him. He says, this is very good. Only after he had created humanity. God's mind does not change. It does not shift all about. You see, Today, we can have the, the most high-paying job, and tomorrow you're fired. You are driving the biggest, most beautiful car, and along comes a truck and smashes it. You value yourself by your beauty, and there's an accident, and the beauty is gone. Your wealth is gone. The children are gone. The husband is gone. The accomplishments don't really matter because nobody ain't interested. But the way God thinks about you does not change. The beauty of being a child of God, when God looks at us, he looks at us through the eyes of Jesus. And when he sees the blood of Jesus on us, he views us as though we were Jesus. We are his children. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. Our worth is not determined by what we believe about ourselves. Our worth is determined by what God says. The truth of, of God's word about us. Here's what God says about us. Hold on to this word. Digest this word. See ourselves from this viewpoint. God loves you, John 3, 16. He loves you with an everlasting love. You are forgiven when you come to, to trust Jesus Christ. Acts 10, for, 10, 43. God sees you as precious. Luke chapter 12, verse 24, and Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. You are beautiful. The psalmist says you are wonderfully and fearfully made. Also in Isaiah 61 verse 3, God sees you as beautiful. Then God says you are mine. God owns you. God, God claims you as his own. He does not disown you when you are. You are God's child. 1st Chronicles chapter 29 verse 11. The problem is we don't often look through the word of God. We don't peruse the word of God to see what God says about us. We hear what other people say and that affects us. No, God says you are my masterpiece and I created you to do great things. I have high expectations of you. I have already laid out what you are supposed to do. So hey, change your way of thinking. God doesn't make junk. You are priceless to God. 
and may your life reflect this today. In Jesus' name, amen.